good afternoon uh, thank you for inviting me for this uh, keynote address uh, at the 2020 uh, my topic of course is uh, deep learning for computer vision so we'll look at uh, how we can use deep learning for computer vision application uh, we know that deep learning is a subset of machine learning and machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence uh, so artificial intelligence basically we try to give our human intelligence to computers that is basic uh, idea uh, and then of course in the modern definition that may may um, this intelligence the machine intelligence may exceed the human intelligence as well it may go beyond human intelligence uh, and in the machine learning of course as we uh, already discussed earlier is mainly uh, to uh, give machines the ability to learn from the data given and then come up with some uh, um, analysis uh, forecasting etc without actually being explicitly programmed how to solve the problem so from the given data and the relationships the machine learn the uh, learn about the data and then uh, give interpretations. Uh, traditional programming, of course, we give data as well as algorithm or rules we have to give and then we can get the answers. In machine learning, of course, uh, we give data as well as answers as well, some solutions, some relationships we have to give. And based on that, of course, machine learn about the data and then uh, uh, interpretations uh, can be given so that's the basic idea of machine learning so computer vision of course uh, is the field we try to give this uh, human uh, visual capability to computers uh, like uh, we have the capability of uh, identifying objects uh, people and we can read books we can read this computer screen and then we try to give this capability to computers. So that is the basic objective of computer vision. Uh, in uh, biological vision system, of course, received information from the eyes and through optic nerves send the information uh, to the um, visual cortex, which is on the back side of the brain. And then the visual cortex has a secondary visual area, which has the knowledge about the objects and the visual processing takes place at the primary visual cortex. Uh, in traditional computer vision applications, what we'll try to do is do image processing to en en enhance the images uh, and then we do feature extraction. Which extraction then the features, key features we have to extract and based on their relationships uh, and locations, etc. And then we can make decision. If it's a face recognition system, then the key features we can identify using which extraction techniques and then their relationship uh, can be used to recognize the person. So that is the usual uh, traditional computer vision application um, approach. Uh, usually we take capture the image and then the pre-processing that is image processing enhancement noise removal geometric correction etc then the feature extraction features depending on the application we can extract the features like edges boundaries etc segments shapes color uh, and shift and surf uh, scale invariant features as well and then incorporating the domain knowledge and the, with the extracted features, we can give the interpretation about the objects. If it's a medical uh, problem, uh, then of course we need uh, medical knowledge to give the medical um, interpretation about the object, about the image. Um, traditional uh, computer vision system suffers because of some uh, issues like we may be viewpoint variation, different camera angles, maybe scale variation, deformation, for example, this cat is sleeping in an unusual position, and but it's still a cat, we should be able to recognize uh, that as a cat, of course, and occlusions can occur, 
and then the interclass variations and background clutter where the objects and the background are similar and then also the illumination condition so these things may because of these things we may have to do a lot of pre-processing before extraction uh, the extraction of the uh, features of course uh, but uh, some application modern applications like uh, uh, self-driving cars, driverless cars, of course. Uh, the main input to such a system is the scene in front of the vehicle, of course. Uh, then, of course, the road lanes, uh, traffic lights, uh, road signs, and then uh, incoming vehicles and the other vehicles. So, they also need to identify. In traditional applications, if we try to do that, we can we have to do line detection, edge detection and so on uh, and the segmentation methods and the detection methods so they will take time maybe traditional uh, vision systems may not be successful in this kind of applications so deep learning of course uh, is a branch of machine learning uh, based on set of algorithm attempt to model high level abstraction so basically it's use um, neural network approach okay the, then there are large number of layers uh, then uh, we call it a deep neural network and these layers will uh, do complicated uh, processing some of them are uh, non-linear transformations so basically in deep learning try to learn about the data in more okay because the, this is deep learning is uh, fairly recent of course machine learning was there for a long period neural networks as well uh, but uh, the problem was uh, the uh, when the number of layers increase how we can do training and so on uh, the ma uh, machine uh, processing power was not there initially but uh, today, today we have this processing power with gpus and cloud-based uh, Executions and also, uh, therefore, we have the required uh, processing power to do uh, deep uh, to train uh, deep neural networks. As well as the other uh, issue is the availability of data. You need a lot of data in deep learning applications. So you know, these days we have the data, internet, and the social media and various other sources. There are a lot of data available. Uh, deep learning allows computational models that are composed of uh, multiple processing layers to learn representation of data with multiple levels of abstraction. So the initial layers of course get the learn about the lower level features in the vision applications and then uh, the other layers will learn about the high level features and then after that of course we might be able to do uh, interpretations and definition. Uh, decisions can be made because the high level abstractions are available in the uh, later uh, processing layers. So uh, in this is a publication, paper of science publication in medical field using uh, machine learning and deep learning. So that we can see the large number of in recent time, uh, it is very, very um, popular in research actually, a lot of applications uh, uh, deep learning based applications are also available now. So a lot of research done in uh, this area now. This is only in medical field, but in other areas also. Uh, uh, these uh, machine learning and deep learning methods are widely used. Uh, so these neural networks, if you look at the neural networks uh, earlier, a little has a long history, but then the recurrent neural networks, uh, convolutional neural networks uh, widely used in computer vision application we can look at that in more detail and deep belief networks and generative adversarial networks again uh, uh, models uh, uh, invented by Goodfellow uh, and then uh, that can be used to generate realistic images you can look at that also then fully convolutional neural networks uh, that is for segmentation and so on uh, deep learning libraries are also available. So the libraries like uh, earlier there were libraries like Torch, Theano, Cafe, etc. 
and then uh, widely used these days is uh, TensorFlow uh, by the Google by Google uh, the PyTorch is also widely used uh, that is mainly used by the Facebook research group uh, then uh, last year of course TensorFlow 2.0 was released uh, and uh, Keras also released again by Google Keras is a high level API then the combination of uh, using uh, Keras and TensorFlow, we can build uh, deep neural networks, deep, uh, uh, deep neural networks fairly easily. So there are new additions, of course, uh, very recently, of course, 2.1.0. So there are some updates of the TensorFlow. And if you look at the how we can see the TensorFlow is very popular. This is from recent publications, how, which uh, libraries they have used. Uh, TensorFlow is that pink one, of course, that is uh, dominating. Of course, the, the PyTorch also making some upward trend, okay, because of the Facebook research. So in computer vision, of course, uh, in, uh, in 2009, of course, in the Stanford University, they, they have created uh, a large uh, data, image database which is called the ImageNet with uh, uh, nearly 1.5 million images and thousand classifications of course single object uh, images. Uh, the group headed by Professor uh, uh, Fifi Lee and then after that uh, there was a competition that is how to recognize the error rate has to be reduced and then um, the first one was on by uh, the by Toronto University and then uh, second one is an improvement to that one and they are both shallow uh, neural networks not deep neural network and the first neural network that's in 2012 by um, again Toronto University research group headed by Alex uh, Krishnawaki and then uh, that model is called uh, AlexNet that is the first time the uh, convolutional neural networks used uh, eight layers in fact five convolution layers okay and then the uh, 2013 that is an improvement to LXNet and then uh, uh, in 2014 there were two competition first one by uh, one by VGG in net that is from the Oxford University research group and the second one by the Google net uh, Google inception by Google of course, after that, very deep neural networks, uh, 2015, uh, by uh, Microsoft, which is called ResNet, Residual Networks, of course. And then uh, uh, they, after that, all uh, improvements of ResNet, right? we can see that they are very deep neural networks. Also, there are some, the human error also, right, also calculated. Humans also can make mistakes in classifying these uh, images in this database, okay, about 5.1. So you can see that uh, some of the deep neural networks are doing better than humans in image classification. Okay, so this is an example where uh, machines are doing better than humans. And uh, this is another example where in the breast cancer screening uh, that is uh, of course, uh, these uh, are breast cancer positions, okay, and then uh, the, the radiologist uh, missed it by the AI system, that's a convolutional neural network based system, uh, detected. So, therefore, the machine, of course, if you look at the graph here, so that this uh, machine is this one and the, uh, and the uh, human is uh, uh, um, one below, of course, right? So, uh, in certain uh, moderate situations, uh, uh, humans can make errors, of course, right? So, therefore, because the machine uh, one is a well trained one for a large number of images were given, and then the machine learned that, of course, right? So, very rarely the machine can make mistake, but human can make mistakes. Um, so we know that uh, earlier also that uh, machines were doing better than humans like uh, in 1997 uh, of course uh, IBM Deep Blue defeated Gary Kasparovich uh, world chess champion and then uh, 2013 16 um, Google um, AlphaGo defeated the world uh, Go champion Go is a board game okay. and also last year 
that uh, Dota 2 is a very popular, uh, very complicated actually, right, uh, video game. And then uh, this last year uh, in April, uh, OpenAI 5 uh, AI system defeated the world champions in Dota 2. Right. So therefore, computers are doing better than humans in many uh, cases. So, <clears throat> and in, in the computer vision applications, if we image classification, one of the simplest classification is the fashion items classification is MNIST dataset, which contains 70,000 uh, grayscale images. So there are uh, fashion items like uh, t-shirts, trousers, pullovers, etc. Uh, and then uh, given any image, uh, you should be able to recognize whether it's a trouser or a pullover or um, shirt or something like that need to be recognized. Okay, so this is in this uh, this is a fairly simple uh, issue problem actually because all these uh, fashion items have a certain pattern. Okay, so for example, all trousers are similar similar pattern. Okay, uh, boots are also similar. So therefore, we can use a very simple neural network in order to uh, solve this problem. Okay, uh, we can use a, a, a very simple neural network. So this is not a deep neural network. So we take the image and then we flatten it. We take the rows uh, like columns, first row here, second row here, like that. It will make it a vector, and then we, we apply uh, some nonlinear uh, activation function, which is called the ReLU. Uh, that is a rectified linear unit. Uh, the purpose of that is to add some nonlinearity into data set okay and then after that we need to get the probabilities out which uh, to identify the uh, the object right so there are 10 question uh, uh, items so there are for 10 probabilities we get so then we use the softmax uh, activation function in order to do that the highest probability position indicates so if this is the highest one then indicates that is the particular object which is in the uh, fashion list okay if the third one is there then that we can see that that is the object so for example if the boot is in, uh, input here so this is a patterned one then we apply the relu function and then uh, they are all fully connected okay all, all neural uh, uh, the neurons are connected to all the neurons in the second uh, the, the subsequent layer okay so they're so fully connected so therefore there are some uh, parameters everyone has parameters okay parameters look uh, weights and biases okay and then um, uh, and this one also has uh, weights and biases so there are parameters of the uh, neural network Right. So the, when the boot is uh, input, actually we know that is a boot. So therefore, uh, initially, uh, the if the in this case, of course, uh, the if the last one is the uh, has the highest probability, then we can say this is a boot. Okay. And but in the training one, actually the initial uh, values uh, may not be. Uh, correct one of course maybe random ones of course they are it may not correct exactly the final uh, layer okay the final output so it may produce something else so therefore there will be an error of course then we have to reduce that in um, training process of course so we will look at that later okay right so if you want to build this particular neural network from uh, tensorflow and uh, Eras, okay, we can very easily build it as a sequential model. Okay, this layer, layer ReLU and softmax, and then we have to specify this uh, uh, loss function. Okay, loss function because when we we know the object, so therefore it, it will predict uh, we know the expected results, but we, it will predict something else. So therefore uh, there is an error, right? So therefore for all the training examples, we can take the sum of all those errors and create a loss function. So the objective of the training process is to find the um, set of parameters, model parameters, which uh, minimizes this loss function. And then we need an algorithm to do that. Uh, that is called the optimizer. So we specify optimizer. So there is uh, some standard optimizer, which is called the Adam. So there are some others as well. And then uh, we can do the training. That is a train 
uh, this is the model dot fit and after that we can do evaluation using the test data and after that we can do prediction with your model dot predict so basically that using that approach we can um, build the model fairly quickly okay uh, these activation functions of course uh, the relu activation function is widely used in deep neural networks okay with a nonlinear activation function if the value is positive it will be the same if it is negative it will be zero so a very simple neural network uh, sorry activation function widely used so the, uh, the softmax one is uh, convert the numbers into probabilities okay the other activation functions like tan h okay and sigma it will convert uh, a number into a probability in binary classification maybe okay and the tan h is uh, widely used in uh, recurrent neural networks uh, and then the advanced one like leaky relu uh, and elu exponential linear units are also there when it is negative it's not really zero some value okay in this one of course there's a curved shape when the values are negative so the in advanced uh, deep neural networks uh, these activation functions are used okay they are all in one diagram here okay uh, and uh, the idea of using this activation function is um, uh, to add some nonlinearity into this uh, our data set okay for example if you want to separate this green and blue uh, red of course uh, then uh, using uh, linear functions we may not be able to do that okay because straight line may not be a good one okay, for example we uh, may not do a good one but we need some non-linearity so uh, purpose of activation functions is to introduce non-linearity into the network right so therefore uh, we know the objects are of course in computer vision we have to use that uh, because uh, objects are curved shapes, not to straight lines most of the time. So therefore, uh, we need to add this non-linearity into data. Uh, but in that uh, particular uh, exercise which we have done is uh, objects are very simple because they have similar patterns, okay, the browsers are similar and so on. But uh, it is not the case in general situation, like um, maybe the cars are parked differently, maybe the cats are sometimes sleeping, sometimes walking. So uh, there are some uh, researchers like Hubel and Wessel, this is very pioneering research actually. Uh, they identify they have used a cat actually cat and inserted some uh, uh, electrodes into cat uh, cat's visual cortex and then they displayed various objects like horizontal line when they display horizontal line some of they identify some of the neurons are getting activated and then uh, vertical line another set of neurons okay circle another set so therefore they identify there are some neurons specialized in detecting certain different features and then also they identify the whole image is not processed by the visual cortex okay only part by part region by regions are processed actually the regions are also not the whole region separate regions but overlapping regions are processed so these uh, uh, findings led to this convolution neural network so therefore rather than taking the whole image take a small patch of that and then apply some filters into that set of filters will give some values okay after that we'll do uh, dimensional reduction using pooling operation reduce the dimensionality and then we can apply another convolution into that okay and uh, finally we have the high level convolutions uh, stages and then the, we can use recognition layers as we have done before okay we we'll look at this convolution uh, in detail what it is okay convolution of course is defined uh, between two functions in a uh, uh, continuous case this is integration in a double integration in the two dimensional one but the images are not continuous they are discrete functions okay not a continuous function because pixels have values uh, integer values of course right? so therefore uh, instead of uh, integrating we do summation okay and then uh, for example if you want to convolute this image uh, with this filter of course we take the center of that uh, particular filter on top of that uh, pixel and then multiply the values and then add them all together that will give the filtered value for that particular pixel so we have to do that for every pixel then we have the filtered image 
so this one is uh, doing in the convolutions of course uh, so the, if the filter values are very important for example uh, the first filter will detect uh, vertical lines of course and then the, the other one horizontal and the uh, maybe uh, different features are extracted from by different um, uh, filters okay. so therefore if you for example if we have uh, convolute that first filter onto a pixel if that is giving a very large number filtered value is very large indicates that there is a vertical line in that particular pixel so therefore uh, feature positions can be identified using uh, this uh, convolution of course, the color images have three um, uh, layers, of course, convolution layers, uh, sorry, the uh, RGB uh, levels, of course, we have to do them separately. Okay. Uh, and then uh, uh, pooling operation, it will reduce the dimension. It will uh, take the 4 by 4 area, maybe uh, the maximum value is selected. Okay, so this is the max pooling operation. Okay, there are the pooling methods. Of course, this is a strategy equal to 2, that the two steps on. The 4 by 4 becomes 2 by uh, 2 by 2 okay uh, and then the, when we are doing that of course it will not reduce the quality of the image that much okay so this is called subsampling or downsampling okay and uh, the idea is that when uh, in the next uh, layers we will have a small number of parameter uh, images therefore a small number of parameters otherwise these neural deep neural networks have a very large number of parameters um, and then this is a convolution neural network so therefore it will take a patch and apply a large number of uh, uh, filters that will give these values and then apply the pooling operation and then another convolution another pooling a uh, large number of uh, similar layers and finally uh, uh, a cube which has the, all the features of course then we flatten uh, it and, and then apply those uh, recognition layers. Then we can say whether this is a car or not by looking at the output the probability. If the highest probability is a car, then the first one should be a, uh, very high. Okay. Then we say it's a car. Okay. So therefore, we can do recognition using um, uh, these uh, convolution neural networks. The idea of having a large number of layers here in uh, in computer vision that um, the initial layers, uh, convolution layers will extract the small features like lines, curves and so on. Then the second layer will be very high, a little bit higher level features and the last one of course will extract a very high level features. Then of course then the system of course may be able to recognize what it is. Okay, So therefore we use the convolution neural network or in this case of course a recognition purpose okay this is a face recognition system and the initial layers identify low level features and then the mid level features and finally uh, high level features then of course face recognition we may we might be able to do that okay so this is the AlexNet which we discussed last time okay five convolution layers okay or eight layers all together uh, initially they had uh, two uh, GPU systems in order to parallel GPU systems in order to train it at that time the training was a problem okay and then um, uh, that is the 2012 winner uh, the first time the convolution neural networks used actually so this is deep face by the Facebook of course Facebook, Facebook is doing uh, face recognition right and then uh, any image of course it will first do a frontalization after that some convolutional layers and then identify uh, accuracy rate is 97.35 for face recognition uh, and then uh, they automatically tag people okay uh, using this face recognition system and then the some examples like uh, we can build our own uh, CNN models, right? For example, this uh, another data set called CFI, CIFAR data, 10 days of data set, the color images this time, of course, uh, 60,000, 32 by 32 color images. Uh, then these color images, uh, if there's a label like that, there are 10 labels, of course, cat, different types of cats. So therefore we can build our own convolutional, uh, neural network, right? So the first one is convolution. Maybe we can apply 64 con uh, filters, three by three. 
followed by ray loop. Okay, then max pooling operation, another convolution with 128, and like that we can build it finally flatten it, ReLU, and then softmax for the classification. We can build that using using uh, this uh, TensorFlow V series sequential model. Okay, so we have these values here 64. Uh, we have decided to use 64. Why 64? Somebody can ask. So therefore, these are called uh, hyperparameters. We have to select them correctly, accurately, actually. Uh, we'll look at that later how to select them uh, correctly okay after that we can train it and then uh, do the prediction okay as we have done before uh, so using tensorflow and keras of course we can build this uh, model fairly easily okay and then there are so issue like call uh, overfitting in uh, computer vision applications so in the uh, if you want to separate this red and blue up using a straight line, we can't do that. Of course, then we call the underfitting situation, and this is an overfitting situation which is try to be very perfect. Okay, sometimes in the training data set there are certain images with some uh, some extensions which are unusual, so therefore the model will try to learn that too much. Of course, that will leads to overfitting situation, and maybe the uh, predictions may not be very good in that case. Maybe this one is all right in that case. And this uh, overfitting situation can be identified looking at the loss function. The training loss is nicely reducing, but the testing loss uh, is increasing after a while. So clearly indicating that there is a overfitting situation. Then the predictions are not correct actually, right? So therefore we have to worry about overfitting situation, right? Uh, there are regular, in order to do that, we can use regularization techniques like early stopping that before the loss function increase, we stop training at that point and then the L1, L2 regularization techniques and dropouts where I uh, remove uh, in the one training pass, we remove some of the neurons and in the second training pass, we remove some other training uh, neurons like that, and then it will not allow some neurons to pull the model to, to, to a certain direction so therefore uh, that kind of approaches we can use for regularization then the maximum regularization also we can use data augmentation also we can use to increase the data set okay if, if you have a small um, training data set and then that will be fit nicely to that training data set but uh, for un unseen images they, it may not work Correctly, so therefore we need we can do data augmentation methods in, in order to increase the training data set. We can look at that later. Okay, but the hyperparameters we said that there are hyperparameters we need to uh, optimize, select the best set of hyperparameters, and also optimizers, right? Uh, Adam and SGT. This is uh, stochastic gradient descent. Okay, uh, we can one tool which you can use is called TensorBolt. In support as an option called H params, a large number of combination of parameters we can see, and then we can look at the which one, which combination is giving the um, best accuracy. Right? So we can look at this graph also. This accuracy is given by some combination of these uh, parameters. So therefore, model can be refined to get uh, using correct um, set of hyperparameters, okay, and also optimizers. <coughs> And then there are some standard architectures in um, CNN like LNET, LXNET, VGGNET, etc., Google Net, uh, ResNet as well. And then, uh, of course, uh, the, the ResNet is a Microsoft one, of course, very advanced one. Of course, it has a residual connections like that. For a, Therefore, we can um, train uh, deep neural networks okay, because of these connections. Uh, ResNet is widely used these days because of its accuracy and also um, it's a very deep neural network. VGG16 of course is the 2014 winner of the uh, Google Net, uh, sorry, uh, ImageNet competition okay, by Oxford University. It's a 13 convolution layers and altogether 16, okay, but still uh, there are uh, very large so this VGG16, of course, it has a, it has a con, uh, 13 convolution layers. Some convolution layers are uh, one after the other. Uh, you apply one convolution, 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 and then 
pooling, convolution, convolution, pooling like that. So this one has uh, about 138 million number of parameters. All these filter values are all parameters. Actually, you need to identify them in the training process. In the, um, uh, the training process, you have to estimate the correct set of uh, parameters. Actually, that is the purpose of the training. Okay. And this one, if, we, if you want to use, uh, reuse it, we can, this is a pre-trained model, so we, therefore we can, uh, uh, we can, uh, uh, we can reuse it for our own purpose with the trained parameters, so we need to do training, okay, we just say model is VGG16, after that in uh, some images in our hard disk, okay, we can use the model to do, identify what it is, okay, so we can say model dot predict image, so the, uh, model will uh, identify the objects okay because it's a pre-trained model already trained for uh, image net um, objects right so uh, it can use for that kind of uh, application so we ask students to use these pre-trained models first and then um, based on that build your own models okay uh, and some of the applications here by our students, this is ongoing research actually, diabetic retinopathy identification and classification. And then uh, we know diabetic people have this uh, issue like uh, 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 hemorrhages, uh, blood leaking in the blood vessels, okay, and also these uh, yellow patches which you exudate, okay. So therefore, this research is to uh, actually classify the severity level like moderate, uh, uh, normal, moderate, uh, severe, very severe, something like that, okay. And also to detect the location using bounding box, okay, small bounding box. So this one is uh, still going on by undergraduate student actually. Uh, I think uh, presently the accuracy is about 60% by the convolution. This is another research um, uh, currently um, doing by our researchers of our students actually information systems research group and then the, we know that the medical prescriptions are difficult to read so the professor Priyadarshan Galapati, professor of pharmacology says it is difficult to read so that may lead to some problems actually if the pharmacist also make mistakes of recognizing wrong drugs may be prescribed may be given of course uh, so these uh, students actually try to use this, um, try to solve this problem using deep, neuro deep um, learning methods to identify the drug names and the, the, the dosage and the frequency separately. Of course, they, they have built three convolution layers here. Uh, the, currently, the recognition rate is uh, drug name is 75 and the dosage is 55 and the frequency is 76 so this one the drug name is barely okay but need some improvements and this is the frequency it's also need some improvement but this one has an issue okay so that is the dosage of course if the if some doctors have some funny extension given in the training data set then the model may looks for that all the time then that may lead to uh, testing errors of course that is uh, need to be regularized of course these models should be improved actually right so the, the other one is the computer vision task uh, semantic segmentation images are segmented into regions and the localization that is to detect the identify bounding box of the object and the object detection at the multiple objects and the instance segmentation is the segmentation uh, for instances as well and then the this image net uh, uh, Competition, of course, they have the image uh, net also have the label plus the bounding box, box um, details, of course, three parameters, or three values actually, right? Top left hand corner coordinate and the width and height, right? That will give the bounding box of the objects. And there's another competition with for localization problem. And there's a, uh, again uh, AlexNet and uh, VGG and ResNet again doing it very well. And then the detection techniques are also there in deep learning, like sliding window, that's a, moving the a window uh, throughout the image, then every window is sent to a convolution neural network to create pre trained model and try to identify that. So that is not a good method. So then the region proportional, uh, proportion based method, RCNN, 
okay and then um, the other improvement to rcn and then the yolo that is you only look once actually only one convolution for the whole image so that's a very popular one actually very um, efficient uh, detection with that okay then retina it recently published so that is also very good uh, in detection and this uh, segmentation issues of course the output it should be an image not a not some probability values or something like that so therefore what we have to do this is a down sampling we are doing then we have to do up sampling to increase the image and get this um, uh, segmented image so therefore we need to do up sampling one of the up sampling method frequently used is called transpose convolution uh, with uh, small images can be make larger images using the transpose convolution Another one is called data augmentation. We said that our students have a problem of not having large uh, training data set. Okay, so the, the training data set is not good. Uh, small, then of course it is not a good model. Of course, uh, predictions may not be correct. So what we, what is, what we can do is to uh, do some changes to some images in the training data set and add them to uh, add the modified one also into the training data set like we can do horizontal flips, random crops, color jitters uh, and geometric changes like shearing and skewing operations. Um, uh, for example, we can do horizontal flip and then we add the second one also into the training data set. It is good for the model. Okay, It has more training data then it can learn more. Okay, Learning is the key here by the model. Transfer learning is that you are trying to use a model built for one purpose for the other pur another purpose. Okay, we, can, we have already done, look at that how we can use VGG to identify our own objects. Okay, and uh, in that case of course we can download the image. Okay, without the classification layers, you can remove the classification layers and add your own classification layers because uh, uh, VGG classification layers are th for thousand classification right for ImageNet. So therefore, if you have five, five numbers to classify, then you remove that and add your own classification layers, fully connected layers, and then uh, you can use it because the VGG um, feature extractions are very good. Uh, recurrent neural network is another one which is uh, widely used for this uh, uh, sequence modeling or sequence identification processing like a v uh, video is also a sequence of uh, images of course then we can use it for image capturing language translation predictions stock market and whether we can predict because after studying the sequences it can predict actually then also we can use this lstm that is another version of the uh, rnn that is uh, uh, that that can remember the long distance relationship okay different architecture but uh, that's also a recurrent neural network uh, uh, we can use it for recurrent neural networks as well uh, here in a recurrent neural networks is the sequence so, so the previous values are we input and the, then also it will learn from the previous values also so therefore history also learn about this one and then we can predict it for example if we have want to predict the next number in this number sequence which is very familiar to us we can build our training data set by using the next number so therefore this if this is the input and this is the next number like that we input this and if you input the last four into the model it will predict the next number okay so therefore we can use a, a very simple um, TensorFlow program to get our training data set here and then the model uh, is uh, RNN a simple RNN is used here uh, after training okay and then um, uh, we can use it to predict the next number using that number we can predict the next number so that like that we can predict the, the sequence of uh, new numbers okay so this approach can be used to predict a video sequence for example if you uh, have a video sequence and then uh, and the the uh, what will happen next and things like that we can predict okay and also uh, we can use uh, maybe uh, the music of course music is a sequence of uh, uh, sequence of um, uh, notes of course uh, therefore we can generate new 
um, music, right? People are doing that already, right? And also text, right? So text generation after studying large number of texts, we can generate new text, new books are also written these days. Like in Stanford University, they have generated new um, um, Shakespeare's text, okay, Shakespeare's text, we like text, of course, uh, after studying large number of uh, Shakespeare's previous text, okay. Uh, so therefore, uh, that is okay. So therefore, uh, one of our students also trying to do some research, like study the uh, single uh, poems and then try to predict uh, unwritten poems. Okay, so this is the uh, set of poems which is called Sirith Maldama. Okay, Sirith Maldama has 180 poems. Okay, it's still 14,000 characters. So it's a character level prediction actually, right? Some, something is predicted okay which is uh, which may need to need improvements of course right the model has to be improved maybe going to a language model also we can refine it further right so the needs for the research in this kind of so this is one of the undergraduate project which is currently going and these recurrent neural networks actually establish these uh, long-term relation relationships using through these gradients actually gradients so sometimes you need long to very long term relationships for example if the if the statement like france is the place i live with, they are who i am um, very good in uh, french very good and then there's a blank so it's to fill the blanks the relationship is far away okay so therefore uh, the relationships are actually established using these gradient values okay so the derivatives actually derivatives and the, in order to get the relationship between this one and this one all these derivative has to be multiplied okay if the values are very small then the multiplication is very small so that will be a very small number and maybe uh, uh, negligible so sometimes vanish okay so we call it a vanishing gradient problem right then I, when that happened of course you cannot establish the relationship also cannot uh, do training further so, so in order to solve that you use this lstm large uh, long short term uh, long lstm long short term memory of course right and the other one is the exploding gradients so gradients may increase some exponentially then of course then you cannot reduce the loss function and the, uh, the the values may not converge okay so therefore that's an, uh, another problem in the rnn we need to do, do some thresholding and put a ceiling to gradient values not to exceed too much and uh, some of the results done in the stanford university actually right uh, describing and uh, given image okay there, there is a combination of cnn and rnn cnn will recognize uh, the object and the rnn will describe the object like dog place uh, catch uh, like that so it will just describe um, using a language model based on uh, rnn Okay. So the other very popular one these days is called a generative adversarial network where you generate realistic looking images. You give a large number of realistic images as well, then the model will generate uh, uh, similar uh, realistic objects. Okay. So these are the last column is all um, generated images. Example, these are all generated images. Actually, these are, they are not real. So for example, this person is uh, it does not exist actually this is a generated uh, person actually right so generative adversarial networks of course uh, there are two models one model is doing the generating image for starting from some random values okay and then the discriminators check how good it is okay so if the generator only uh, one number of course a number between not and one if it's closer to one it is real otherwise uh, it will send back to both models to, to do it again okay this one will improve it work and this one also improve its evaluation work and then um, the, the set of real images are the input to the image okay right so they are for both try to improve finally um, uh, realistic looking images can be generated okay one of our our student is trying to use these gen models to image colorization okay so when the input is given uh, so this is the expected result and this is the output so far from the gen model it is we are, they are using a pure conditional gen 
a different version of the can actually right so this is not a computer graphics problem actually right so you are not telling the computer how to color okay so uh, instead we give a large number of colored and uncolored images let the computer to learn how to color okay so these are the outputs uh, from the that uh, deep uh, neural network of course and another research which you are doing image in painting when the image uh, positions are um, some part of the image is missing or damaged uh, we can uh, recover it using this kind of model okay after studying several model this uh, identify this particular type of uh, uh, model which uh, also is some specialized convolution uh, models which are called the dilation convolution dilation convolutions uh, actually it will um, filters look at the small filters look larger areas because you need to look at larger areas in order to establish the relationship in order to fill the uh, gap of course in the uh, in the image that is also going on so these are some results of course right this is the ground truth value actually this image is part of missing of okay. this is the input to the model and this is so far the generated image okay uh, and i need some improvement still this is an ongoing research actually and uh, another Brown's University, of course, they have uh, Duke University, of course. Uh, very interesting project, like uh, when you input some text, it will generate a video sequence, okay, video sequence. So that's, uh, again, maybe you can say the voice also, Gen it will you know, generate uh, some uh, video out of it, okay. So these things may might happen in future, okay, like, uh, the script uh, if you just type it in uh, film can maybe can be uh, generated using uh, using generated actors as well okay so this is basically the uh, the idea of uh, the machine learning or deep learning okay um, this has the data as well as a lot of linear algebra okay linear algebra is the basis for um, deep learning and machine learning as well right so then because all these optimizing the loss function okay back, back propagation okay regularization everything is linear algebra based right linear algebra is the basis of uh, deep learning okay if the answers are not correct what to do then the steer the pile uh, until um, it's looking it's look right so add some more data maybe linear algebra you have to change maybe new optimizers new loss functions etc modify and then might be able to get a better result okay so that's the idea of deep learning actually it already there are systems or technologies are using deep learning models like maybe siri we are familiar with that google assistant okay and then the recommendation of moving netflix very widely used these days okay facebook as well as spotify uh, for music okay facial recognition and automatic tagging by iphones and the facebook translation by google translate okay and the uh, fall detection and banking in finance so okay. uh, there's a widely used um, application area actually after learning um, a lot of documents right so they might be able to identify the faults okay. and uh, then self-driving cars okay i am on tesla leading companies are doing uh, this um, self-driving cars so okay. they are now trying to use uh, computer vision mainly as the input right earlier they tried to use the radar and various other inputs but these days now they are trying to uh, concentrate fully on computer vision application like using convolutional neural network for, for recognition and detection and so on uh, so because they are after training for a large number of uh, images of course uh, possible images uh, you can say what to do okay rather than trying to detect at that time okay so the, the major difference between uh, traditional vision and deep uh, learning based approach at the, the traditional one we do pre-processing -pre and then the feature extraction is a separate uh, uh, operation of course right so here actually we need to do feature extraction because the model using these filters will extract the features right so it is only the input is an image of course right no need to do anything else okay uh, and then the, if you build the correct model you can get the results correctly so the different type of uh, processing method actually using these deep neural networks 
Okay. So with that, I conclude my presentation, of course, right, uh, with this slide. So Alan Turing in 1947 said, what we want is a machine that can learn from experience. Okay, so the machines get experience, of course, they are very good. They should be able to uh, do a lot of things actually, like um, uh, many things in future, of course, right? Of course, like uh, uh, Andrew Neck, of course, um, machine learning and the deep learning guru. Of course, he says uh, artificial intelligence is the next electricity because he says the electricity change the life of people like industries and transportation and then the healthcare and various other things okay uh, and then the ai also may change people's life okay but the internet also i think the internet also similar okay because internet change the people's life e-commerce e-learning and so on today we are doing this online session thanks to internet um, so therefore with that of course i conclude my presentation thank you very much if any questions i can answer okay thank you very much answer okay thank you very much uh, that was an interesting delivery and uh, thank you professor kodikara are there any questions from the audience if there are no questions let's move on uh, thank you again, Professor Kodikara. Uh, I know these are hard times and we're still familiarizing ourselves to the new environment. So I appreciate the time and effort taken to deliver such a timely keynote speech. Uh, next up, we have two parallel poster presentation sessions, uh, session 2A on distributed computing and session 2B on bioinformatics and natural language processing. But before we move to that, I would like to take a minute to appreciate the uh, conference goal sponsor, uh, LSEG Technology. Uh, we are thankful for the support given by them to make this conference a success. Uh, we now have a small message from the goal sponsor, LSEG Technology. <laughs> 